What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Derek Emelworth, and in this video we will be covering Chapter 8, uh, Section 3, Problems with Models. This kind of links in with my last couple videos, so uh, they're very closely related. If you haven't seen them, then you should probably watch them first. Um, problems with Models. The climate model created in my last video is actually a very simple one. This is due to simplification in the model. The scientific input rep represented perfect conditions, not something not generally possible in real world, real world, real world scenarios. And I'll go into more detail on that later. More, um, well, later meaning right now. Uh, more specifically, the use of the Stefan Boltzmann constant assumes radiation emitted from a from an from an ideal black body, which the Earth is not. We have you know oceans and, and continents and and also the value used for the model. Uh, for the energy re received from the sun is an average of all the values at all latitudes and at all seasons. Uh, in reality, um, I think the, the value we use is somewhere around 350. In reality, some places near the equator during the summer receive up to 1,200 um, units of energy. So, this isn't going to be, it's going to be very general, not really all that accurate. Now, another simplification is that the model fails to accommodate variations in the radiation received from the sun. Because uh, it, it fluctuates, it's not exactly a, a perfect all the time number. Additionally, it doesn't take into account that different, that different terrain types reflect different percentages of the same radiation. For example, snow represents almost 90% of, of the same radiation, whereas uh, obviously some other uh, asphalt is going to absorb all of it, more or less. Uh, another absent piece of the model is that other pieces of scientific and environmental effects, such as evapotranspiration, evapotranspir are not included. Uh, so there, there obviously are other scientific processes that need to be included. Finally, the last piece missing is the effect of human involvement, a very large factor when considering global climate, uh, you know, emission of, of greenhouse gases and carbon footprint and all that. Uh, these factors are known as missing variables and missing processes. So, um, this was another picture that I took out of the book, and it was kind of a, well, it looks complex, but it's actually kind of a simplistic diagram uh, showing all of the other factors that may contribute to the um, large-scale emission of greenhouse gases by humans, which is going to greatly affect the global climate, as we have um, determined through scientific research. Uh, simplifications. There are too many reasons that simplifications are made in computer models, not all of them are bad. Uh, lack of scientific understanding of a phenomenon. Phenomen if we don't understand something, it is really difficult to put into a computer model as you might imagine. This is especially true of climate models because our understanding of our climate is still incomplete. Uh, lack of available data is low. Uh, many variables in the climate model, for example, uh, our general values because it impo it's, it's impossible to, to obtain data from every location on the globe at every specific time. Uh, and there's one more reason, which is actually really major, uh, which we'll cover now. Uh, finally, the lack of computing power can severely limit model complexity. Almost all of the most powerful computers on the planet are used for running models. However, even a supercomputer can take days to calculate even just a few milliseconds in a complicated car crash model. So in the interest of time, some, some models have to be simplified in order to be effective. Uh, the example they used in the book was that if it takes a whole day to calculate what the temperature is going to be the next day, you might as well just wait and find out, because... Anyway, you get the point. Um, <clears throat> is that some, some kind of scenarios are time-specific, time and it's not really worth it if you can't calculate it accurately uh, within, within time. Uh, development. Many early climate models were primitive by today's standards. Some early ones modeled the Earth without taking oceans and elevation into account, which is going to drastically split the data. Uh, often, lack of processing powers, processing power forced models to calculate different aspects of the climate separately, rather than create uh, unified models, which is what we use mainly today. This is the main downfall of the early models because they couldn't use input from each other, existing independently. As processing power increases, models do become more accurate over time, within reason. As, as it increases over time, it still isn't possible to have one model which could accurately predict the environment at every point on Earth uh, all at once, at least not now. Instead, the current method is to cordon the Earth into large grids. Early grids started around 1,000 square kilometers, but the new ones average around every 100 kilometers. 
The higher the resolution of the grid is, that is, how small the squares are, the more likely it is that the component given will match the local one. However, the higher the resolution, the more processing power used, so it's, it's kind of a, kind of a balance you're playing over that. Um, okay, this slide is a picture of one of the earlier component models and, and how it's spaced out. Um, and then this is a more complex model, which is more accurate and in high resolution. And then this is a final, um, but this is a more of a modern setup, so this is it's going to be the most accurate that we have access to. Um, this is actually a picture taken from the um, As you can see, uh, the first square has grids of about 300 kilometers, the second 150, and the final one 75. However, the final model requires 16 times as more calculations as the first grid because there are 16 of those squares inside in the third diagram as there would be in one from the first diagram. So, as, as you can see, it's, it's kind of plainly illustrated um, that the higher the resolution of the, the grid, the more accurate the model is, the more processing power it takes. Uh, these are my references. Um, uh, thank you for watching.